A few days ago, I went to a Burmese tea shop here at Mesot called the Lucky Tea Garden. And in the comments to that video, someone suggested another Burmese tea shop here in Mesot that I should go check out. It's called Pho Tu, P-H-O-E-H-T-O-O. -O. I've never been there before, and uh, that's where I'm headed today to have a cup of tea and perhaps have a snack. This tea shop is located just uh, south of the main market here in Mesot. And an interesting way to get there is to walk through the market street here. And then we should eventually emerge near the main market building. We walk past it and a couple of streets uh, from there. We should be able to find this place. I've done my Google Maps due diligence, so I checked out the listing for this place on Google Maps. It's there, it's listed, and there are pictures of the front of the shop and the interior and the sign. So uh, with all that information, I should be able to find it. And they also have some pictures of the food they serve. They seem to specialize in Burmese salads for the most part. So I imagine I'll end up trying one of those. And I think like a typical uh, tea shop, they might have samosas and breads and other things already on the table. I've seen that done in the past anyway. And you sit down at your table and you have all these ready-made snacks right there waiting for you. And you can eat them or not eat them as you choose. And when you settle your bill, they can sort of look at the plates see what you've eaten and then charge you uh, accordingly so we'll see if it operates uh, that way i learned a lot through all the comments that people left after my lucky tea garden video so thank you very much for all of that i learned for example that the oven where they were baking the naan bread was called a tandoori oven and i think i've heard that before but i forgotten it so I, I it was nice to relearn that it's called the tandoori oven and uh, the sweetness of the tea I had was also a bit of a topic of conversation because the first cup I had was extremely sweet and the second cup was less so and someone left a comment saying that tea in uh, Myanmar actually comes in different variations depending on the level of sweetness and bitterness and milkiness and flavor all these sorts of things and each type of tea has a different name and in that comment he left uh, some of the names that they use in uh, in Myanmar I can't remember any of those Burmese uh, words but I do have the menu from the Pho Tu tea shop right here and uh, if I find a shady spot I can read you some of the types of tea at least how they describe them in English and uh, I find that quite interesting so I have the menu in front of me here and if you go in there to order tea you can choose between sweet and milky bitter and milky sweet and bitter light and bitter or super sweet so you've got quite a range and there's also um, a listing beside these that show the Burmese names for all these tea but uh, I can't read that so I don't know which one I'll try sweet and milky would be my go-to because I associate these teas with having a lot of milk and being sweet bitter and milky maybe give that a try to see what bitter tea tastes like Sweet and bitter, light and bitter, light and milky, any combination you want. On my uh, last trip to the Lucky Tea Garden, I mentioned that I was pretty flustered for some reason. <laughs> I, I don't think I got enough sleep the night before and my brain wasn't uh, working properly. So I was barely aware of my surroundings and I was falling all over my own feet. 
but today I seem to be much more rested and despite all the activity around me here in the market I'm not feeling uh, flimbobulated as I was last time flimbobulated by the way is not a real English word that was just something I made up the word I was looking for was uh, discombobulated but I thought I would invent my own room my own word so I came up with a uh, flimbobulated and I might be in the right spot I'll have to do a Google Maps check but I just spotted this short stretch of street here and it looks like there's a whole bunch of tea shops down there or little restaurants and cafes I don't see the sign for Fo Tu of course I have no idea if I'm saying that uh, word correctly oh that's it right there okay right right in front of me it's just a new sign I hadn't seen you don't see that one in the Google Maps pictures so there it is up ahead but I always get so nervous when I go to places with my talent for going at the wrong time because from a distance it looks like there's a rope barrier closing the whole place off oh no it looks to have an opening <laughs> I honestly thought it was closed because I, I spotted these uh, ropes uh, on the on the uh, outside but uh, yeah there it is and it is open we've got some people in there ah, very exciting so there's the uh, sign for this place Bo Tu tea and food and we've got the uh, instructions of course for uh, sanitizing your hands and wearing a mask and we've got our uh, hand sanitizers down here okay I've got a seat at one of the uh, low tables with a stool they do have um, regular tables as well where you could sit at a chair a bit higher up though even those tables don't have chairs with backs on them so no matter where you sit you're sitting on a stool so I thought I'd uh, everyone else here is sitting at one of these low tables so I thought I would uh, do that as well um, there's the uh, again the name of the place you can see it Fo Tu Tea and Food Shop and there's the uh, interior all these little uh, tables And here is the menu. It's the same one that I saw online. So there's, there are all the teas. And I already ordered a cup of tea. I ordered the bitter and milky. And which one, uh, how, how do you line these up? Bitter and milky. So that is the uh, Burmese word for it right there. And they're all very similar, of course, but just slightly uh, slightly different depending on whether they're milky or sweet or bitter and these are all the salads that they have noodle salad rice noodle vermicelli salad tomato century egg salad pennyworth leaf there's a whole bunch of different things oh and then they have um some food on the back which i hadn't seen before so Chinese style noodles and vermicelli, omelet with vegetable, jade fried rice, oh, Thai basil and chicken. So some Chinese and Thai dishes. And then, uh, yeah, a whole bunch of other things here too. And as I said, I ordered the bitter and milky. So let's give this a, a taste before we move on to anything else. Bitter and milky. Yeah, it's good. Sort of lightly sweetened, I think. There's probably a bit of sugar in there, but, but not, a, not a huge amount. It's kind of how I, I like my tea. Yeah, it's very nice. 
And when he brought the tea, he also brought a plate of snacks. As I said, they often put things on the table that you don't order specifically, but you can have them or not have them. And he said there's something in here about uh, chicken. He used the English word uh, chicken. <clears throat> and there they are there. So I'm going to uh, sample one of these. Oh, they're nice and warm, fresh out of the oven. There we go, some sort of a chicken snack. Very nice. You could probably come here, have tea, sample some of these snacks, and that would be a good, uh, good lunch, to be honest, you know? If I had all four of these, that would probably be a good lunch. But I think I will order something off the menu. Very nice. Once more, there's something in there with a special flavor, but I can't tell you what that flavor is. I taste the chicken, but there's something else. Mm. I'm narrowing in on an order. I'm going to keep it very simple and just order one thing, one dish, have that with my tea and these snacks that they bring to the table, and that should be fine for a lunch. And I'm desperately trying to fight off my instinct for ordering the most inappropriate thing on the menu, which I always do. So I, I always pick the wrong thing. But um, my theory here is that all these salads on the front are sort of traditional Burmese dishes and I recognize a lot of them from my trips to Borderline here in uh, Mesa and then I think the items on the back are more Chinese and Thai dishes so I'm gonna stick to the front and at the very top of the menu there's noodle salad and maybe the theory is that the most common and the most normal regular dish is at the top of the menu so maybe I'll go for a noodle salad and I think that's a traditional Burmese dish um, right below it is the thick rice noodle salad and the thin rice noodle salad I don't know how they differ from normal <laughs> noodle salad the uh, tomato salad caught my eye as well. Hmm. There's rice salad with pickled tea leaf, and I know that is a traditional Burmese dish, the tea leaf salad. Maybe that would be the way to go since I'm at a Burmese uh, tea shop. Go for the most traditional sounding of the dishes. So. It's coming down between noodle salad and rice salad with pickle tea leaf. Which one? I kind of want noodles, but I also want the tea leaf. So if they had a noodle salad with tea leaf, that would be my choice. We'll see which one I choose. It'll be a surprise. The order has been placed. The balance tipped in favor of rice salad with pickled tea leaves. And I ordered a second cup of tea. The first one was bitter and milky, <clears throat> and now I'm going for sweet and bitter. I have no idea what I'm going to get. We'll see what uh, sweet and bitter tea is like. And I'm uh, powering my way through these chicken snacks. There were four of them. After I eat this one, there will only be one left. Those are really good. So far, I am pleased with my choices. Whoa. My second cup of tea has arrived. This is the uh, sweet and bitter. 
and just from licking the spoon, I can tell what a big uh, difference ordering sweet makes. This is, this is going to be sweet. Yeah, that's really sweet. I think you'd have to have a pretty strong sweet tooth to want this all the time. So I think I would go for the um, bitter and milky. That would be my, uh, my go-to tea. If this is bitter and sweet, I can only imagine what the super sweet would taste like. Dentists around the world <laughs> would be howling in horror probably at the uh, thought of uh, this super sweet tea. And I feel confident about my rice salad with uh, fermented tea leaf because it came out right away. I ordered it and it just appeared on my table. So this must be a very common dish. It's something they had ready to go. You know, <laughs> I'm always worried that I'll pick the one item on the menu. They'll go back and tell the cook that foreigner, he ordered this. And then the cook will just sort of storm off and quit out of frustration. It's like, oh, I don't want to make that. Why did he pick that dish? Because it's so difficult or so unusual or it's only available at seven o'clock at night. And I don't know that because I order it at one in the afternoon, some crazy situation like that. But I ordered this and she brought it out and it looks good. I didn't even know I was in the mood for rice until it showed up on my table and it came with a uh, fried egg on top. So I'll show you what it looks like. Oh, there it is there. Um, fried egg and then rice with looks like some chickpeas, some veggies, and I think like all this green that you see, or not like really dark green, these are all the uh, fermented uh, tea leaves mixed all the way throughout. I don't know how strong the tea flavor will be. Find out in a minute. So here it is here, fried egg with the uh, fermented uh, rice tea leaf salad. <laughs> Give, uh, give this a try. Interesting. Very strong tea flavor. It's coming a little bit like a surprise because I did have tea leaf salad when I was in Myanmar in a couple of different places. And I was always surprised that it wasn't as tea like as I expected. Though thinking back, I think when I ordered it, I was at kind of a tourist place, like at a fancy cafe connected to a museum one time that I think only foreigners go to. So maybe they made a mild version of it. And perhaps this is the, like, the real traditional tea leaf salad. Yeah, and they're, they're not messing around with this. That is a strong flavor. And not just the uh, tea leaf. The spicing is quite strong and some hot peppers uh, throughout. So this is a uh, yeah, very interesting meal. Good choice for today. Mm. And I remember now, one of the things I really liked about the meals in Myanmar, there were often like peanuts. I think I thought there were chickpeas in here, but they're not, they're actually peanuts. So as you're eating something like soft rice or noodles, you end up with a crunchiness throughout because you keep coming across uh, peanuts, right? So uh, you get some uh, crun crunchy crunchiness as you eat your rice. I really like that. Hmm. Very interesting dish. Yeah, I really recommend it if you come here and you want to try something traditionally Burmese. This is the way to go. Quite unusual.
going to settle in and enjoy the rest of my uh, lunch. Move the camera just to capture the, uh, the whole scene of my table here and where I'm sitting. Still drinking my sweet and bitter tea, I guess. It's good. I finished my traditional uh, rice salad with uh, fermented tea leaves. That was really good, but really a strong flavor. So you'd have to be comfortable with a heavy flavor lunch if you're ordering this. And I'm still powering through the uh, chicken snacks that they brought. There are four of them, as I said, one left. Mm. It's really good. And that is uh, kind of it for my lunch at Fo Tu restaurant or tea shop, Fo Tu tea shop. Of course, I don't, I'm sure I'm not saying that correctly. I tried to look up online how to pronounce those two words, but I couldn't come up with anything that was consistent or that made sense. So I'm just going with Fo Tu. And like all the tea shops, they have their collection of uh, condensed sweetened milk. This one is also from uh, Palace. And these are the, the chicken snacks that I've been enjoying. And then they also have uh, these ones over there ready to go. Lunch is all done and paid for. My whole bill came to 70 baht, which is about $2.30 US, which is really good value when you think about it because I had that delicious uh, Burmese rice salad with fermented tea leaves, two cups of tea, and four really tasty chicken snacks. So I guess those chicken snacks were five baht each, which works out pretty well. They even have a free Wi-Fi in there. Uh, I checked on my phone and they've got two signals there and I'm sure one of them is the uh, public one for customers. That's kind of cool. I love this street here. All these little streets are always so interesting. Because you've got this uh, faux two Burmese tea shop. And then at the end, there seems to be another kind of restaurant. There it is over there. Though I don't know if it is open or not, or exactly what it is. It appears to be not open right now. Maybe it's only opens at night. Let's just zoom ahead here and look around the corner. Okay, yeah, not a lot going on there. But there's something going on over there. A lot of guys zooming up on their scooters. Not quite sure what that is, but it's a popular spot. And there's another little uh, restaurant over here. Hair salon. Mobile and computer service. Tattoo parlor. Another uh, barber shop. Oh, there's a whole bunch of barber shops in here. One more just across the road. A couple other shops over there. Another one there travel agent for booking uh, bus tickets and even a little uh, cell phone shop here and then we come back out onto the main street which as I said we're right in the middle of the Burmese part of Mesot with the main uh, produce market just up ahead over there Doug's quick review and summary. Two questions. Would I go there again? Yes, I clearly would. Very comfortable place. I had a nice uh, encounter with the owner manager towards the end, and she was teaching me how to say thank you in Thai and in Burmese. She, uh, she appeared to be from Myanmar herself, so Burmese would be her first language. She was very friendly and very happy to have me in there and fiddling around with my camera. She didn't mind that at all. Everybody was quite entertained by me and my, uh, my GoPro antics, so that's always nice. 
Second question, would I order the same thing? And the answer to that is also yes. As I said, that rice salad with fermented tea leaves, it's got a lot of flavor happening. It's a strong flavored dish. I don't know whether it's always that way, but the way they prepare it, it's pretty, uh, pretty strong flavor, quite spicy. And if you're not in the mood for it, maybe it's a bit much for certain people. It's sort of on the edge for me. I don't know if I would have it every day because it is uh, a lot of flavor all at once for my poor uh, digestive system, but it is good. It's a very good dish and uh, they prepared it very well, I thought. So yeah, I would order it again. The tea, of course, I would order again and those chicken snacks were delicious. So yes to both. I would go there again and I'd order the same thing again. Here's a thought. Can we as foreigners all get together and come up with a sign of approval that isn't as cheesy as thumbs up? Because I always find myself giving people the thumbs up and I feel like such a fool every time I do it. I feel like I'm posing for a stereotypical election poster or something. You know, vote for Doug. He'll make your life better. But the, uh, the cook, for example, just came out of the cooking area at this uh, restaurant, and I wanted to indicate to her that I liked the meals. Um, you know, goofy foreigner that I am, I feel compelled to have to tell everyone around me my opinion about everything. <laughs> she probably doesn't really, isn't really worried about it, but I thought I should tell her that, uh, yeah, I thought it was really tasty. So she walks by my table and I look up at her and give her a big goofy grin and give her a thumbs up and point to the food to indicate that I thought it was uh, delicious. <laughs> but, but as I said, can't we come up with something other than a thumbs up? Yeah, we have to work on that.